TB Photo X125 Tefix, and welcome back to another video. Well, uh, this time we're gonna talk a little bit about flash and the uh, different flashes that I have and uh, that I use uh, for the time of being, and a little bit of the new guys as well. Uh, okay, uh, fair point. Uh, I was actually gonna do a video about these two new old school. Uh, studio strobes that I managed to get on Tradera, a site that I have plugged uh, numerous times before in uh, uh, in videos uh, in the past. <clears throat> but I thought why not do a complete series of it like so. So um, here we have all of the flashes or at least some of the flashes. I do have some uh, multiple versions of the same flash unit in my little <clears throat> collection. But I thought we're just gonna do a little bit of an overview and go through what uh, I've been able to accumulate thus far. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, get on with it, shall we? First off, I think the oldest one I have is this one, the SB16. Uh, this speed light was made specifically, or rather, uh, there are two different versions of it, and uh, this one has the special hot shoe connector for the Nikon F3, so it's a little bit of a specialty thing for that camera. But what is a little bit interesting in it is that this 70s flash, and yes this is 1970s tech, actually has TTL in it, and also for being such an old school flash, it has two flash heads. Uh, the top one that actually now has the wide angle attachment on that such, uh, and it has this little fill flash down here as well. So this one has actually both a multi-mode and a TTL mode. It works with uh, AA batteries. And uh, yeah, it's a cool little unit to have. I also have the proprietary extension cord that you can use with it. But we're going to talk a little bit more about those things later. And then we have the first flash that I ever used. It was actually my dad's. This one is the Nikon SB20. It's a very... I remember growing up, I thought that that looked like an electric, an electric razor, actually. So, yeah, that's a little bit... That's a little bit of a lower-end unit in the Nikon SB range of flashes. Uh, but uh, in all in all, it's very good for what it what it is. It has a TTL mode for film cameras. I would rather point out that everything here, except for the Young Nuo that is sitting on the corner there on the Nikon D7200, that's the only one that has, uh, of these ones anyway, that has a modern day ITTL mode for digital cameras. The rest of these have TTL modes, but they are more suited for film cameras. So that's a little bit of a fair point to keep in mind. But anyway, let's continue. Well, this one has only a, uh, a head that you can actually change, uh, you know, the angle relative to the lens. And uh, you have actually this twist system for going between uh, wide angle, uh, normal and telephoto. So you have some different types of diffusers that you can put in front of it like the revolving number plate of Goldfinger. <coughs> uh, yeah, And also there is a little bit of a slit in the top here for a bounce card if you are keen on using those. But uh, yeah, it's a good little flash to have for uh, the beginner and uh, you can have those for not much money at all on the internet. So yeah, it, but still you get the Ni Nikon Speedlight uh, quality and so on. So. It should work uh, treat no problem at all. Uh, next one, the one that I probably have the most copies of, I think I have about three of those, the Nikon SB24. Uh, it is a good speed light and I've used it in many occasions. Um, uh, I mean, these guys just work. They are fairly inexpensive. I think the average price I've paid for them is about uh, 400, 500 Swedish kroner, so uh, that's uh, about what they cost, and they usually work a treat. Uh, I mean, uh, they are not that desirable, which I think is a little bit of a shame, but because 
they do have a little bit of uh, you know nice features and nicer features in this one the SP24 I mean you have multi you have strobe mode so you can multi flash if you want to do those kinds of artsy images you have TTL as stated for film cameras and you also have a manual full manual mode and even also a automatic mode because all of these uh, Nikon speedlights have this little eye, uh, eye thing here so they all have uh, built in uh, light sense light meters in them so you have the automatic mode so yeah it, it works for what it is and then finally we have the SB25 which I have put on the Nikon FA. Uh, that flash also is one that I really would recommend to anybody uh, though I know that the successor to the SB25, the SB26, is a little bit more desirable uh, among uh, Nikon speedlights because it has a dedicated uh, or rather a built-in slave unit. So uh, these guys uh, all work on a hot shoe and with different triggers but they don't have a slave unit built in so they will only trigger by uh, some kind of receiver or on a hot shoe or with something like uh, a uh, TTL flash extension cord. This one is made by Opteca uh, and uh, you know you put it on the camera hot shoe you can have a flash or some kind of sender unit on top of this and then you have your other flash here that also in itself has a hot shoe connector and a tripod screw uh, actually so these are not that expensive. You can probably find them also used on the used market. I know Nikon have some all on their own brand name uh, extension cords as well. But this one is something I would really recommend that you can you have a thousand and one uses uh, with your camera. So yeah, and also the SB25 has the same functionality as the SB24. You have the multi mode, you have TTL for film cameras, you have uh, what is it called, yeah, automatic settings and so on. So they all work a treat for that one and then you have the Young Nuo and I can never remember the product name of this one, it's the YN568EX. It has a few years on it now and uh, I know that Young Nuo is one of those uh, brands that are a bit polarizing. Some people swear by them and some people completely hate them. Well, I bought that one on recommendation actually from Tony Northrup when I just had gotten the, S the D7200. And, uh, it has worked for me and I have done some actually paid work with it as well so it has it functions it's what it is and it works and it has intelligent uh, TTL and that one also has a built-in slave unit so I can trigger it with another flash so actually with the Nikon D7200 that has a pop-up flash and I know that a lot of people uh, sometimes diss on pop-up flashes but uh, the thing that people fail to realize uh, sometimes is that uh, the pop-up flash on modern DSLR cameras and, as, uh, and mirrorless also I would uh, suspect is that they can actually strobe out TTL information to uh, uh, slave units uh, around the uh, setting when you're doing photography. So you can actually use the pop-up flash with the speed lights that are scattered around the scene in a very intelligent way so yeah i know that a lot of pro professional photographers are yeah, you know into using pocket wizards as trigger units and there are also some young newer ones out there and a whole heap of different i mean for instance i have a very simple tri radio trigger here by one sen. I think this one takes a button style uh, button cell battery and then you have the receiver down there that has do two AAA batteries in it but there are some different ways to trigger flashes as I said you can use something like the uh, pop-up flash if you have a modern DSLR to trigger flashes uh, these uh, 
multi-blitz uh, units, these uh, studio strobes, they can actually be triggered with this. And this is not a radio trigger. This is actually a small flash unit in itself that works with dual AA batteries. And um, it has just a single point. You put it on the camera hot shoe. You have a test button here, or rather test, auto off, reset and test. So this unit will make it so that it will send out a small flash through an IR filter that will be read by the strobe unit's uh, optical slave unit and uh, that will trigger the flash. So that's also a way to do it. So you can have, as I have seen, you've seen here, uh, radio triggers, you can have optical triggers, you can have TTL triggers like the pop-up ones, you can have, you know, like pocket wizards that uh, uh, by radio control gives you the TTL information. And then you have uh, the uh, probably another old school way of using it and basically the SB16, 20, 24, 25 all have uh, PC sync cords, uh, PC sync ports, which means that you can use, you know, these types of cords in order to trigger the flash, which is also a valid way to do it. Uh, and also what I can tell you is that except for the SB16, the 20, 24 and 25 all have a little port. I mean, under these yeah, little Nikon plastic covers, you have a little, you have actually a three pin connector. Uh, and these are actually for quantum speed packs, which means that you can, instead of using the internal batteries of the flashes to trigger or rather to charge the capacitor in order to do the flash triggering uh, or rather for do the flash you can actually use a quantum pack which is a battery pack i don't have one of those myself and i think they are cost a pretty penny if you find them on ebay but what they do is that they have a very fast recycling time on the for the, uh, on the camera so you can basically use uh, the camera in continuous shooting mode and the uh, flash will actually keep up with a several frames a second. So the only thing you need to really be aware of is the potential for overheating the flash unit. So that's a little bit of it. Also what I can tell you about the SB25 is that it has a built-in Let's see if I can do it like so without messing anything up. Yeah, you have a built-in bounce, white bounce card. And uh, also you have a built-in diffuser here for wide angle work. So yeah, as stated, uh, the uh, SB16 and the SB20 both have, you know, a manual controllability for if you're using wide angle, uh, normal range, normal, uh, focal length or if you're going into some mild telephoto. Uh, the SB24 and onwards up to the young Nuo, they have uh, motorized zoom features. So they will zoom, actually the young Nuo will even, it when you put a uh, zoom lens on the D7200 and you use the camera, uh, the flash in, in uh, TTL modes and so on, the, it will actually read the focal length of the lens and it will zoom accordingly, which is a good system. And I think that these two will also do that to some degree or some extent. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, but now uh, let's see here. Yeah, we have also this one specialty flash that I have shown you before. It's the Sunpack Auto DX12R. Uh, this one doesn't have the uh, connectability, as I've understood, to a to a quantum pack, or maybe that's what this is. I'm not really sure. If you have any any thoughts about flash and your own recommendations for a beginner or intermediate user, or whatever, please put it in the comment section below and tell me what your opinions on it is or are. I should probably say. I mean, this one is a specialty one, and uh, you have seen it in some of my earlier work. Uh, these flashes are meant to be put on uh, the filter thread 
of your macro lens in order to do dedicated macro photography. So this is a little bit of a specialty uh, device when it comes to photography. Uh, what else do we have to say? Ooh, well, yes, these two. Uh, these are actually not the only ones. Uh, I know that in the past, for a couple of years ago, I did a uh, video, I think it was with my Mamiya camera, I'll probably put a link in the description to that video, where I used some, uh, I would say, uh, cheaper end beginners uh, studio, strobe, uh, light studio strobes, uh, that I got on Tradera or eBay, I can't really remember, but they're basically the lower end spectrum of it. But then I actually, for a couple of months ago, I saw that the photographer Peter Elgar had a video where he talked about his two, uh, you know, multi-blitz units that he used when he did school photography, when he photographed classes and so on. Yeah, and um, I started to look at, I just looked at Tradera and I managed to see that this guy, I think it's a retired, he was a retired photographer that had also used these for school photography. He was selling four, not two, these two, but four multi-blitz units uh, for, uh, on a, a internet auction and um, the thing was, he was not going to uh, send them, uh, he was going to only have them, you know, come and get them. But I put on in an offer for them, uh, and I also s asked the seller that, can you send these, because I don't have any, uh, any ability to come and collect them. So he said that, well, uh, I don't really know how to, and I asked him, yeah, you can pack them this way, and you do this, and probably we should do Schenker, which is a, you know, shipping company here in Europe. I think they're originally from uh, Germany, but they have expanded throughout Europe, and they are, I have only good uh, experience with them thus far, I should say. So actually, he sent them to me. I won the auction, and I think I, I think I, I didn't pay that much for these guys. If I remember, I will put the amount here in the, in somewhere here on the screen. But four multi-blitz units. I mean, these were what are they, the mini studio 402 and the Variolite uh, 500. So two of each. I only had the stands here I actually got with my old school, you, you know, my old, uh, you know, cheap and cheerful studio strobes that I were basically China copies. But anyway, these ones are brilliant units. I'm probably going to do a video when I'm using these in the, in the future. And that's what this device came with. So, yeah. I'm really chuffed about them. Um, the problem, I, I tested them all out when I got them and they turned out that they worked brilliantly, all of them. They're a bit old school units and so on. Uh, they have, you know, tungsten modeling lights on in them. Or, uh, I, yeah, probably. But I think that that's our modeling lights that are not made anymore. I think you can get replacements that are uh, you know, LED based or something like that because the European Union and so on because of climate change and so on uh, has decided that it's not viable to make those types of bulbs anymore. And keep in mind that's modeling light. It's not the actual flash tube. It's the modeling light. That, so it's the constant light source because it's so inefficient that the majority of the electricity that is made, that is consumed for them uh, goes out as uh, heat, infrared radiation. It's just, it's uh, not that, uh, what should we say, efficient. So not much goes out as light, visible light. Most of it goes out as ra infrared radiation, i.e. heat. If you guys are wondering what I'm drinking, it's Pel San Pellegrino with some ocean spray cranberry juice. But anyway, these uh, flash units also have, I, I don't know if, 
is it called the Bowens mount? It's kind of this bayonet fitting and I got these rings for these units as well. So I can probably put some accessories on them. And on the underneath here as well, they have holes for umbrellas. So yeah, I think that they are very versatile in what you can use them. I know for a fact that Multiblades has gone out of business. So yeah, I'm a, I think that I still got some good deals on them. I know that they're not all around anymore, but as I've understood, they made quality pieces of kit. If you have any, if you have any uh, experience with Multiblitz, please tell me in the comment section below because I would be really interested in finding out more about them. But also what I can tell you is that when you're using these types of flashes and uh, the type of modifiers you can both make and use for them, I think that one of the best things to have with these are the handyman special some um, duct tape i don't have it here with me but still another thing that would be good to have as a complementary accessory equipment is something like this this is my old shepherd uh, fm 1000 sh uh, flash meter i mean this one as you can see you can use it with the pc port and you either have a dome or a incident light meter uh, thing with this one and you can get it both in f-stop and uh, in uh, <clears throat> uh, exposure value and you can also calculate uh, multi flashes so uh, yeah and uh, shutter speed you can put in with the dial here on the side so this is a good flash meter for anybody who's out there you can both do ambient and um, you know uh, you can trigger it with it as such but this one is my a little bit more simple one as you know i also have the i've shown this in many videos before the uh, minolta ivf i think that this one is still main, made by kinko uh, it's a brilliant one this is made in japan it's uh, the autometer ivf as it says on the back and you can both have the dome and you can also remove it and use it. Let's see if I can put it out on here. Here you go. Yeah, this is the five degree spot meter. So what you basically do is to, you can, I basically do so that I put it like this and I look through it and I have the trigger right here in order to do an exposure and then I can just look here if I got a good value or not. Um, it has some different modes also. This one is very, I would really recommend this one for any beginner that wants to go into flash photography or even photography as, as I stated, this I actually used when I went to Stockholm and I used the um, Hasselblad 500CM. And since that one doesn't have a built-in flash me uh, built-in light meter, I could use this light meter in order to get the exposure of the scene with the five degree spot meter. So I could, you know, really expose expose the image for the part that I wanted in a good exposure. So that's a little bit of it. Uh, really recommend it. The Minolta IVF brilliant piece of kit for anybody who's getting into this type of flash photography so yeah that's a little bit of the stuff that uh, i think is uh, good for the beginner when it comes to flash photography keep in mind as i said every flash here except for the young Nuo, uh, are non-ttl compatible with uh, modern dslrs uh, these ones are meant for uh, film cameras, these three have TTL, well this one also has TTL, proprietary to the Nikon F3, but these ones are for film cameras and they have TTL that uh, works. So yeah, it works, I have used it, some family gatherings, uh, last when, my, when I turned 30 I basically used that combo, the Nikon FA with the Nikon D, uh, S b25 and uh, it exposed very well for the images i just put it into 
aperture priority, the flash on TTL mode, and it just worked. It meters what uh, aperture you're using, it puts itself on the correct, uh, I think it's, what is it, it's uh, 1 1 25th of a second uh, for maximum flash sync speed, and it just works. So yeah, that's a little bit about the flash units. Uh, and uh, what I don't really have a real recommendation. I mean, you can't really go wrong with Nikon SB units. Most of them are brilliant. They will just work and uh, think you will be happy with most of them. Uh, this one, the SB20, I would say that's something that you can use for fill flash uh, since it doesn't have the... Yeah, also, yeah, I know that a lot of people don't really like the look anymore about putting speed lights directly on the camera like I have here. I put it up here more for display purposes. But I agree with what you're saying. Um, when you have rotating, rotatable flash heads and uh, ang that you can change both the angle and the rotation, you can basically bounce it in ceilings, you can bounce it behind you. I think uh, Toby for photo, from Photo Rec TV. He talked about a old video, this is years ago, that he usually angled the flash head so it would bounce on the wall behind him so you get a very soft light all, um, over the entire scene. So that's a little bit of a nod to him, Photo Rec TV. A good channel, actually, I would recommend it. Uh, I will put the link in the description below. But also, yeah. As I stated, a lot of these flashes uses AA batteries, and I have plugged these many times before. Class Olsen rechargeable 2300 milliamp, 2300 milliamp uh, batteries. Swedish chain of DIY stores, Class Olsen. Really good batteries, I have had very good luck with them. Uh, one thing I've noticed also, both at work and as a photographer, uh, if you have certain cameras and equipment that needs a particular voltage, uh, sometimes you are stuck basically with using non-rechargeable batteries because they actually have a little bit stronger voltage, voltage uh, than rechargeable ones. So that's a little bit of a pity. But uh, yeah, these ones have worked for me and I have them both in AA and AAA for the ones and uh, flash triggers, radio flash triggers, I should probably say. But I think that's uh, all for me for now, and as always, yeah, I think this is a little bit of a uh, half, half video. It was mainly gonna be about the multi-blitz units, but I thought I would just, ah, just pull it out, show you a little bit what I got, and the, the, uh, usability of them. I think that most of these, they're very good, interesting units to use and uh, with some little bit of equipment you can use them in multiple different ways and you can use them both on camera and off camera of course uh, and in many different situations. So basically what you can potentially do is if you use something like a radio trigger, the one sem you can put some SB24s around in strobe mode in order to do strobe photography, which is kind of a cool thing to do. So yeah, but I think that will be all for me for now. And as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. And I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment and subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye.